In this video, I'm going to share with you, at the request of several of our subscribers, including Hiram and Joni, who said, you know, you're talking about you have to have a system. What's exactly the system? So we're going to go over the simple six. So make sure, like Joni, like Elena, like Hiram, that you subscribe and engage with us. And the easiest way to do that is to hit that little bell so that every time we do part of the simple six on Teaching Tuesdays, you'll get notified. Hey, aloha, Mark J, world's laziest networker, coming to you from our backyard here in beautiful Kauai, Hawaii. And a couple of people said, what's that pattern on your shirt? Well, this is actually Fay Ray from the movie King Kong, screaming, ah! And I know what happens is people get involved in network marketing and they get sucked in to sponsor more, sponsor more, nothing's happening. They bring people in, nothing's happening because uh, people don't really know what to do. Uh, everybody knows uh, the second biggest lie in network marketing that's made a lot of money is uh, uh, people don't duplicate, systems do. That's a bald face lie. Uh, by now you probably know if you're a regular on this channel, uh, myself and my wife, the fabulous Davine, uh, we're uh, several successes in network marketing. We've constructed the number one course in network marketing, uh, which is Go90 Gross, the number one uh, training course in all of network marketing, and the number one self-development course, which is the Master Key System. What's really great, now that's for sale. Okay, we just tend to give that stuff away and uh, let people decide what they think it's worth. But that's another story altogether. So the system we're going to talk about today, like I said in the uh, frontal load there, is the simple six. Where did the simple six come from? Well, let's talk about systems first. Uh, what does duplicate in an organization are systems uh, based on skills, vitalized by people who teach those skills hands-on. And I think it's so cool, because I just had an argument with my son, he's 45 years old right now, and I told him I learned this stuff from W. Clement Stone, who built the largest, most successful sales force in history. Had $100 in his pocket when he was 33 years old, and died a billionaire and gave over a billion dollars away. Um, you probably have heard of the author of this book, Napoleon Hill, who was laboring in obscurity until he met the great man, W. Clement Stone, who wrote The Success System That Never Fails. Now, <laughs> these two guys worked together for years and then eventually wrote a book uh, that combined these two called Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. It's on those books that I base The Simple Six and when I tried to explain to my son, he wanted to tell me that, you know, it's fine to say he built the largest sales force in the world, but you need to say, Dad, at, at that time. And then we had a dialogue, and that's what I want to have with you. And that's what's so great about Alina and Joni and Daryl and John. Uh, by the way, you guys asked Daryl and John, how do you invite? Freenetworkskills.biz, how you invite and how you convert. Just hit that link. I'm going to give you two skills for free. There's absolutely no upsell. Anyway, let's get into the content about the simple six. What is the simple six, and how did the conversation end with my son? Well, I explained to him that principles endure, fashion comes and goes. And the way people were generating leads and showing people uh, the way they were showing their business, the way they were selling insurance policies, the way that they were doing network marketing years ago, uh, it's changed over the years, but the people that have been successful built their business on principles because principles endure, fashion comes and goes. So it doesn't matter how you get your leads. In the final analysis, you're dealing with people, and the people that join your team, you have actually made a promise to them to help them alter the quality of their life. Now, here's the deal with systems. When you have uh, Mo, Larry, Curley, and Joanne, Judy, and, and Frida, right, leaders, all teaching something different, and these are your people, you're going to have what? Confused people. So this here is, again, Mara, uh, Fay Ray screaming. Okay, what we're going to do is kill the monster for you. This is what you need to know. Division among leaders 
always leads to division among teams. And we would actually, Davian and I would actually have a husband and wife. We would see one wanted to do it this person's way and the other one wanted to do it in the same house. What happens to the people that they sponsor? Anyway, I think I've made the point. I don't want to belabor it about systems, but you need a system based on skills vitalized by people who teach those skills hands-on. And that system needs to be standardized, okay? If it's not standardized, and you're with a company that doesn't have a standardized system, you are dead in the water. Duplication without standardization is a fairy tale. So if your company doesn't insist on one and it lets all kinds of trainers, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the con artists and everybody else in, the great ones like Richard Blissbrook, Tom Al Schreider, me, okay. <laughs> We're all gonna confuse your team. You need to set the culture on your team or bring somebody in that understands this because duplication without standardization is a fairy tale. So how did we do it? We did it with a simple six. Number one is definite major purpose. And I'm gonna start that one because everything begins with desire. Number two is PMA. Number three is WP, uh, which is written plan. Number four is uh, retail, okay? If you're not retailing, you don't have a real business. Five is recruiting. And six is, uh, everybody says the, the fortune's in the follow-up. That's not true. It's in the follow-through, and I'm not splitting hairs. This is how you get growth. And we'll talk about this at point six. So this is really point one. So let me tell you a couple of things about definite major purpose. Uh, number one, which you want to look for, uh, the first thing that you want to do, number one, is no goals. Okay? What? Saying what? No goals. We're supposed to say what's their why? What's their why? You know, what do you want five years from now? And folks, stay away from all that. You set the. Uh, when I bring someone in, you want to set this on your team. Simple six, six simple things. It's really broken down into two parts, which is the mind and the methods. Okay, mind and methods, and we've talked about this in other videos. PMA, positive mental attitude, definite major purpose, written plan of action, uh, written plan expressed in continuous action. That's the mental part. This is the physical part where we go move product, we enroll more people to move product, and we follow through to get growth. So the first thing you want to do with people when you bring them in is no goals. You set the goals. First mistake people uh, fail to realize is they work on efficiency instead of effectiveness. Okay, what does that mean? Don't worry about how much time they put in or how they're gonna squeeze this into their life. You're gonna help them do that, but don't try to get them to put in more time than they can just a few hours a week to begin with. What you wanna work on is what's effective, and what's effective is you set the goal. You set the goal, okay? Number one is you set the goal, and that goal is to recoup their startup money, recoup their startup money, get them a hundred bucks to give to their spouse, okay? And that's one, two, and three, okay? And cover next month's auto ship, okay? This is all I wanna do with someone. This is the first thing, and let, and let them figure out how many hours they're gonna be able to put in. Then we're gonna to move to a definite major purpose. Now, setting a definite major purpose in doing this for over 30 years, I have read four purpose statements of people that came in the business out of somewhere upwards of 5,000 purpose statements my wife and myself, the fabulous Davine, have read, and only four of them were actually a purpose. All the rest of them were what we call affirmations of deficiency. They were not purposes of life, what they were, believe it or not, was what people didn't want anymore. I want to get rid of my credit card debt. Uh, I want to pay down my mortgage. I want to tighten up my retirement fund. Those are not purposes in life. So what we would do with people in setting a definite major purpose is bring them through Think and Grow Rich. If you go to the site, and I'll have my wife put that down there, masterkeyexperience.com, we will show you how to build a definiteness of purpose 
We have a 26 week course and it's very, very expensive. It's gonna cost you one dollar, okay? So, uh, and this will help you set a real purpose in life. Why are you really on this planet? So number one is definite major purpose. Until you have this, you have nothing. Let me be really clear here why this is valuable for sticking with me this long. You see, when people tell you they want to pay down their credit card debt, they want to pay down their mortgage, or they want to buy a house, and by the way, buying a house is buying a liability. Anything you pay into is a liability. Something that pays you is an asset. So you want to help them build an asset with the business. All of these things right here are things based on what they do not want. Okay? And the, and, and the gorilla's going to get you. What does that mean? Because this is how they've been thinking their whole life. They are destined to fail because they are firming the negative, it's a deficiency. You need to get them around the campus two to three uh, months, get them in positive cash uh, flow, okay? And we'll show you how to do that right here in parts four and five. Get them in positive cash flow, get a feel for each other, and we gave you the onboarding process. If you haven't seen it, go back and look at it, where you get their color code, build a list with them, and so forth. Very simple three-step uh, process. You want to get them in positive cash flow and let them get a feel for what's possible here. This stuff will happen when they pick a purpose. So I ask you one simple question. Why are you on the planet? All your bills are paid. Everything's done. You don't have any worries. What are you going to do with your life? That's the purpose. That's what we're here for. There are no common people. There's heroic purpose in every single one of us. And you need to help them find that. First thing you need to do is find it yourself. So we're going to go through the other uh, five parts of the simple six. So make sure you subscribe. The wise network marketer will share this with their team and hit the bell. So when part two comes up or any of these parts come up, you'll be notified immediately and you'll have a system. Let me explain something to you about human nature. This is really important. Everybody that joined our team would talk to the people cash and checks and they'd say, how did you get successful? 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 When they asked leaders on other teams or in the company, they heard 10 different things. No matter who they talked to on our team, they said, simple six, simple six, simple six. This is human nature. People will copy the behavior of the group to gain acceptance of the group so they can have a voice in the group. You did it the last time you went to church. You did it the last time you went to an Elks Club, uh, Lions Club, or anything else. This is what's fantastic about our business. It's based on human nature. And what is copying a behavior? It's duplication. So build a culture around the simple six. It's based on the most successful sales force and the most successful self-development books in history. Hit that link down below. Let us know what your comments are. And like Daryl and Hiram, let us know what you'd like us to cover for you in the upcoming videos. Let's have a dialogue here. Peace be the journey. And we'll see you on the beaches of the world.